That's that shit right there. Rich get down to anything. That's that. That's that Oshkosh music right there. You know what I'm saying? That's what they be playing when you walk into Oshkosh and and motherfucking uh children's place and shit like that. Lord, I mean, they always playing that type of shit when you go into that ass kids stores. Like, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? That white music be playing in the background and you don't even be hearing that shit. You like, that shit be regular. Take your ass in motherfucking Foot Locker. You hear that shit from the rip. Ain't do nothing for y'all. Nothing was done for me. Like, what the fuck? They playing that shit in there. You walking on white stores, you do not pay attention to the music. You forget the shit even playing until they cut it off. Oh, shit, that was playing? You walking in Foot Locker. They straight playing Drake. It may not mean nothing to y'all. You're like, oh shit, man, it wasn't nothing fucking done for me. Real shit. Not ass fucking Oshkosh kinds of children's plays music. You know, I ain't listen to that shit in the car. No, that shit out the window. Real you know, rap shit be all soft. It's like they be having that shit like on, on level six. You know how like TV go to a beam. They be having that shit on six. Like, what the fuck? Turn that shit up. Real you know, rap, you don't never hear none of that shit we been listening to. And none of them motherfucking stories on racist fucks. I mean, but um, I wanted to know something real quick. I wanted to know um, what y'all feel like, like, like how y'all feel about people telling y'all business, whether it's good or bad though. Like, good business, bad business, little business, big business. Like, how do y'all feel about somebody telling y'all business? And I wanna, I, I wanna, you know, I wanna talk about something. I wanna know how y'all feel about people talking about any business. It ain't gotta be bad. Good, great, horrible, sad, little business, like anything. Like how, like, how do you feel just about people, you know, communicating about you, or basically, while you're not around? They might tell the wrong thing. Okay, okay. They might tell the wrong thing. Ot, what up, baby? Shit when I be driving, I really can't fucking see. This is what happened. No, we definitely know that. Uh, we, we definitely know what happened either way. I just want to. I just want to see something. Real quick. Okay, so here's about. Here's how I feel about it. Um, just and and, and and when I explain this to people, you know, it come off bad. Like I'm just being a you know an asshole, but just don't. Don't speak about me at all. Don't don't bring me up because one of the most unanswered questions that we all ask ourselves is, how did my name come up? Like you ever heard about two of the most randomest, two of the most bombs, two of the most whatever just had a conversation about you? I Man, for the life of you, you can't think like, how the hell did I come up in a conversation? That's all we care about. A person can be telling you right now, yo, man, if Joe said. Boo, 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 yeah, ga, ga, da, 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 da. You be like, yo, wait, 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 wait. How my name come up? Oh no, because um, then like, oh no, we was watching your video, and then like, oh okay, like, like that's all we care about was how my name come up. I, I, I just want to know. You get what I'm saying? Like the angle, because the reason why I say, hold on, let me put this charger. All right, so the reason why I say, don't bring me up at all, is because. You can tell me what somebody said or what somebody did, but you can't never explain or tell me the vibe on how it was said. So, you I, like, Philly people, we talk aggressive, but we don't really, like, I'm like, if I got that dickhead, but you, like, you just got to know how people are, right? So, you might be telling somebody something about me, and they probably, yo, bro, I'm talking to the bull. He said you be on some nut shit and da 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 but when he said it, it sound real bad. But you probably didn't even say it like that. Of course, word for word, that's what you said. But you ain't mean it like that. But I don't get that part of it. I only get what you said. Just like texting. Like, you can see a text message right now and read it on someone else and shit. But then when you talk to them, like, no, nah, I meant, like, you know what I'm saying? So this is why I don't like people talking about me. And don't don't be the middleman. Don't relay no messages, right? Because I feel like if they told you something about me, and if it's bad, I felt like he, he felt as though that you wouldn't tell me. So don't even tell me because if I'm bad mouthing somebody to somebody else, I'm telling somebody who I know that don't even talk to this person and he'll never know. 
You get what I'm saying? So if they told you something bad about me and y'all had a combo about it, most likely he trusts you not to tell me. So you ain't even got to tell me because all you going to do is force my hand. You get what I'm saying? So I just ran with people just don't talk about me at all because even spreading good news is bad. Yo, so you know Rich, right? So you know Rich got the Wild Night audition, man. I'm proud of him, right? Good news. Everything going great, right? He, he, he ain't on no hate and stuff. He, he, just, he, just, he said, I'm doing good, positive, right? Now, he told somebody in your family that. Your family like, wow, I don't this. He ain't tell me about that. I'm about to call and ask him for a check. I'm about, to, I'm about to do this. I'm about to do something weird. So, you being positive and telling somebody positive business, what if he ain't want that person to know? You get what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's never okay for you to just talk about people. And I tell y'all this all the time. If you're close to me and, and we rap, they'll tell you, Rich don't do too much of I'm talking about people like I in the whole are that's enough about that person. Like, don't get me wrong, like you know, we did and all that, but I don't like constantly talking about people, you know. So I'm just that dude who just don't speak about me if I ain't around because why? Like, like why me? It's over a trillion people in this world, but y'all speaking on what I'm doing. No, don't do that. I'm cool. Like, don't don't oh no, I ain't saying like that to prevent any altercations, any misunderstandings, mishaps, miscommunications, shootouts, fighting, arguments, stress, drama, to prevent all that, just don't talk about somebody, don't mention somebody, because it don't matter, but what I want to talk about, what's been on my mind, is uh, why do people feel like what other people doing should bother them, I never understood that, like, you doing something, bothers people. And I'm like, yo, like this, I'm giving you an example, right? Somebody come to you like, yo, man, like, I don't know, I don't know why this girl, I don't know why this girl went to that trade school, like that trade school, anything. And then in your mind, you'd be like, but why does that bother you though? Like, why, like, like, if somebody tell you something, and I want people to understand this and stop falling for the cat, right? If somebody tell you something, about somebody else or whatever else, that's because it's bothering them. I'm not just going around saying stuff that I don't care about. So if you want to stop with that, but why you worrying about that? Oh, no, I don't care. Not like that. I'm just saying, like, I'm just wondering. No, it bothers you. But why should it? Like, why, why would somebody else eat, drink, pray to, believe in, bother you? I've never understood that. Like, people are really, like, sit up with people and be like, yeah, like, this bitch do this and she do that. Like, why is she doing that? Why do it bother you, though? Like, like, if she did it or not, does it affect you? So if she didn't go to that trade school or she ain't mess with this nigga, would it make you better or worse? Probably neither, right? So why do it matter? Y'all just be wanting to talk about people just to, because y'all got lips. Nobody be wanting to hear all that. Everybody, let me, let me just say this real fast. Everybody got business. Everybody got skeletons. Everybody got something. So you you exposing somebody else's skeletons is not nothing. What's the difference between me having skeletons and him getting exposed to his skeletons? We both did the same thing. It's a skeleton of people's class. We all got it. So, but the people that talk the most stuff got the most skeletons. So you worrying about what somebody else doing, but what you doing? Oh, that girl here look a mess. Oh my God, but your hair not even done. That's the world we live in. They bid off your, your hair being done and their hair not done. You get what I'm saying? But that's really for you. They have bid off you because you got your hair done, but they don't like it. But they don't bid off the fact that your hair ain't even done. Everybody got skeletons. Stop telling people business. It ain't your business to tell. Mind the business that pay you. You can't do both. You can't focus on your business and worry about somebody else's. But everybody want to bring up people's flaws and what people that did in the past. Man, man, I can name 10 things right now. So can everybody in this damn live. 10 things that they wish they never did. But who was anybody else to bring that up to make you feel away? Like, 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 who are you? But that's the first thing people want to do when y'all fall out or whatever is want to tell your business. But like, why? What you gain from that? Shut up, bitch, you a whore. That's what that boy did. Okay. Cool. That was true. You didn't lie. What do you gain from that? Don't you know knocking somebody else down never lifts you up? Knocking somebody else down never lifts you up. I 
never get feel because don't, don't get the game wrong. If knocking motherfuckers down lifted you up, I'd be knocking people the fuck out. But it don't. So me exposing you don't benefit me. It don't help me. We both look goofy. We, me and you was best friends. We stopped being cool. We don't talk about it. We don't look goofy at all. One person say what the other person did when they was cool. We both look goofy now. I look goofy for having a business, and you look goofy for telling a business. We both look dumb. No one, no one sees somebody expose somebody else and be like, ah, she thorough for that. I'm glad she said that. She thorough for that. No, y'all both look nutty now. It never been that deep to go going around telling people business because one, if I know it, it's for me to know. It ain't for me to tell. You get what I'm saying? And two, I don't benefit from it. That's how you know people be having these little hidden agendas and they be envying you because they they, they, they just want to tell your business. They just be wanting to, any reason is to say something you did. Because if somebody can tell your business, it been on their head. It, been, it, it already been ready, like it already been on their tongue. They just waiting to say it. Anybody told your business, I don't give a fuck what they said. Anybody ever told your business, it was already on their tongue. It was already on their tongue. I've been in numerous situations where me and uh, somebody, you know, had a disagreement or falling out, and I couldn't even think of the business to even tell because it wasn't on my tongue. Some people, y'all beef. Y'all be cool. Y'all have a little misunderstanding or falling out Monday. By Tuesday, she already grinding you up to everybody else on the phone or on social media and all that because it's already been on their mind. As soon as you told her that, she already put the bullet in the gun. She's waiting to shoot you now. But what I'm telling y'all now is don't let don't let your past eat you up, man. You know, um, it happened. And if it's in the past, that means you got past it as well. So don't let nobody tell your business or expose you or whatever else make you feel like you embarrassed or you less than somebody else because at the end of the day, if all our skeletons was up front and, and, and on the road, everybody can see it, we all be humble. Because the people that be bending off your flaws be the ones that had the same ones. You get what I'm saying? Like, nigga, you got the same flaws as me, but you bend because somebody else said it. Don't, don't feel, don't feel no, no type of way about that because it's just, it's like, people do that, but I don't like, I know a lot of people that really take that stuff and really be hurt and insecure about it because they think, oh, well, whatever I did when I was younger or, or whatever I did back then, somebody breaking it up now and now I feel embarrassed or I feel like people look at me different. Everybody going to look at you different. I want people to look at me different. I don't want you to look at me the same like everybody else. I want everybody to look at me different. You know, own, own what you did because you did it. Don't suck dick on, in Poison Ivy and then be upset when it come out that you did it. No, be upset that you did it. You get what I'm saying? Don't be upset because somebody said it. You did it. Own it now. You, you did it. If you was going to worry about what people thought or you was going to worry about how it would was when it came out, then you should have thought about that before you did it. You get what I'm saying? Because that's, that's how I think. Before I go out there, they'll be like, no, because if I do that dog and somebody see me doing that dog, I'm, I'm going to be mad. But no, I ain't going to do that. That's why some of the niggas don't even take y'all out. Because he be contemplating with himself. Like, no, because I don't want to take it on Fridays and then run into somebody and then I got her with me. That's wrong, right? I'm going to be the big. No, I ain't going to take her. That's what you got to start doing. See, the thing is, you got to think about the decisions you make and not think about how you're going to cover them up. Just think about what you're going to do before you do it. Stop just being so quick and in a moment because in a moment will fuck your life up. And it's weird because in a moment can mess your life up. You get what I'm saying? Like, for instance, right? You like this boy... You don't really know him, but you like him, right? He say, damn, come see me, shorty. You like, all right, I really like him. I'm going to go see him. I pull up on him, right? You're in the car, and you're talking. Now, conversation get heated. You get horny, but it's in a moment right now. He talking that shit. It's in a moment, right? Conversation get heated. You're like, damn, I want to fuck it. Conversation keep on going how it's supposed to go. Then you're like, fuck it. It's in a moment. I'm just going to do it, right? You fucking me, and you fucking raw. Ain't nobody even talking about it. Kind of, you fucking raw. Dick was amazing, right? That, that moment felt good, right? Then you, you wake up and you got a crazy ass itch on your vagina and this green shit coming out. And then you scared. You're like, oh shit, what the fuck? This has never happened before. Yeah, that, in that 
moment, it just fucks your life up. Cause then you got permanent BV. If that's the thing, I'm making this shit up as I go. Then you got permanent BV. And you got HIV now. And you pregnant. And your mom kicking you out because you ain't supposed to be having sex. Do you see how an inner moment decision could change your whole life that fast? So don't so don't be that like think about everything you do because the girls who got one or two bodies and they real militant and they real and they real, you know, everybody put them on a pedestal and everybody respect them and they got pretty friends and they living their best life. They done did some things, but for the most part, they think about the things they do before they do it. And that's what separates them from the whores. Whores don't think. They just do it. That's why she fucked cousins. That's why she fucked brothers. Because she didn't think to say, or do he know this guy or how we know him? She just was fucking him. Like, like this, right? I'm going to use Vines for example, right? This girl overthink everything. Like, every little thing is life or death decision for her. Everything. Babe, which dress should I wear? Black one. No, because if I wear the black one, but then, like, it get real lenny, and then, like, okay, wear the white one. No, because, like, let's just say somebody bumped me, and I spilled my drink on me, and then I got to, all right, the black one. No, because I don't, it's like, everything is a decision for her. She don't live in a moment at all. She fuck every moment up. She overthink every fucking thing. I'm like, babe, let's just do it in the car. No, because if we do it in the car, let's just say they try to tow it while we in the middle. I'm like, what the fuck are you trying to tow it? What are you talking about? Like, she overthink everything. But that's how you got to be nowadays. You got to protect yourself. So you got to second guess shit and you got to think negative. Like, no, because like I do that shit. You got to think like that. Too many inner moments we regret. That nigga, you can't stay. Every time his name come up, it make you itch. But you fucked it. You regret it. It was an inner moment. I don't know why I fucked it. Like, he was just talking and I was horny. I just did it. Exactly. Stop trying to be in the moment because that shit moves so fast. That moment is so quick. You get what I'm saying? Let's see, yeah, side job. What, what is it? Yeah, side job. See, let me just mention this real quick, right? Because I've been posted had uh had talked about this a little minute ago, but I forgot. Um so back when the whole um back when the whole uh the Marty Cobain thing first took off, like when he uh he kissed the tranny and all that, right? And um I was like, you know, I made my video or whatever, da 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 and I posted in my stories, I said, um, if you ain't got ten thousand, I'm not replying to you, right? And fully fully scoop all had he posted it or whatever, right? And then People was in the comments like he ain't even got ten thousand. He worked for Amazon, right? And when I tell you, I was I was laughing so fucking hard because I'm like, people are really, like people are really fucking stupid. Like they really think your job determines your salary. And I'm like, bitch. First of all, for one, Amazon pays pays bills. They don't support my lifestyle. You gotta know the difference between a job that pay your bills and what supports your lifestyle. Amazon pays some bills. They don't support my lifestyle. I would never take an Amazon check and go buy some fucking Balenciagas. I would never take an Amazon check and go to Miami or Atlanta or whatever else. This job pays bills, right? And everything else you see other than the bills that I do, it's another income for that. But for a person to think that you don't have a certain amount of money because where you work, it's got to be the most dumbest shit that I ever fucking heard in my life. He don't got 10000 He works at Amazon. What the fuck do that mean? I know a drug dealer right now that's probably got a hundred k and got a job. That's just facts. I know a drug dealer right now that got a hundred k and got a job. I'm just saying, shit don't mean nothing. I know motherfuckers with a job and ain't got no fucking money. 
A job don't support a lifestyle, my nigga. A job pay bills. A career supports lifestyles. So don't get the two confused about, you know, somebody ain't got something because where they work at. Because I can tell you right now, I don't know about y'all, but I know about me. I can quit this shit the day or tomorrow, and I'm still going to be able to eat at Denny Hanna and Ruth Chris and buy what I want to buy and still drive what I drive and live where I live, wherever I work at this particular job or not. I knew that going into this job. And me working at a particular at a job like this, it, it keeps me humble and not letting me get level-headed because God knows I don't need no job. You know? God knows that. But why not? When I don't do nothing all day and I'm sitting on my ass until a particular time of the day where I go do what I do, what am I doing? A job ain't going to hurt me. It's like, all right, Rich, go ahead and kill time, get a job, you know? And then, for those who want child support, right? Um, if you want child support, right? And you ain't got like, you know, uh, I forget the forms. I don't know the, I don't, I don't get, the, I get the forms missing. So I don't know the names of the forms, but you can't just pay child support out of pocket. Like I thought you could. I thought you could do that, but you really can't. It's a whole, it's a whole system designed to keep you where you at. And I want you to understand that. Of course, I'm not a celebrity like Meek Mill rich and Yang, of course, what he do, you know, like that. But when you want child support and you start paying your child support without having a job and them garnishing your wages, they start to ask, well, send us your recent pay stubs and how are you getting this money? And at that point, you're fucked because they don't want your money. They want to the, they garnish you. They want you to get a check or something so they can take, you know, like they want to garnish something. They don't want you to pay him enough because they feel like, oh, well, if he's just paying it, then maybe he's making more and we need more from him. So they don't want you to pay nothing. They want you to garnish. They want to garnish shit from you. Just like credit lenders and school, they want to garnish your wages. They don't really want you to pay it because they're looking at it like, well, if we want 150 from them every month, right? And they give you that 150 every month and they ain't got no job, then you like, uh, well, if we only ask for 150 from him and he's just giving it up without a job, well, maybe he's making more than what we think he is and maybe we want 250 from him then. You understand what I'm saying? That's that's how that's how it works. So for the time I was paying my child support, I'm thinking everything's fine. I'm paying my child support, it ain't no big deal. No, they kept sending me letters. Oh, well, did you get another job? Where you working? Come in for a hearing. We need we need pay stuff. What the fuck I'm gonna tell? What I'm gonna tell? Oh, um, how I'm getting the money? Oh, um, I be gambling. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck I'm supposed to tell? Right? So, me having a job, it kind of makes all these things easier for me in a way because you know, like for this, we're gonna use Amazon. First of all, I don't work for Amazon, but we're gonna use Amazon as an example, right? So now. Richard makes $1,000 at Amazon every two weeks. Okay. We got a, a pay stub from him. We know where he worked. Okay. We want to take two fifty dollars from him every check. That's what we're going to garnish for his job support. So we see how much he made. Okay. Rest of it. Go, Rich, pay rent, pay the light bill. Okay, everything else. That's what that check did. But now it's time to go to go to Benny Hanna now. And now it's time to buy some clothes or some shoes now. Where am I going to get that money from? They don't give a fuck about that. They give a fuck about a pay stub. So, I need a job regardless because I can't really do shit without, without having it while people asking me questions. I don't want you to ask me questions. I just feel like money is money, but they don't look at it like that. If money was money, let's just be real, I probably wouldn't have a job. I'd probably be, you know, 110 invested in the comedy thing, but the fact that, the fact of the matter is money don't really mean nothing. I can feel like over the years, money ain't gonna have no value. Because it's just like people don't even want your money. They want to be in your business. You know? So it gets real, it gets real, you know, frustrating sometimes. And I see somebody comment, I already thought about that. Well, if you make a business, right? Rich Dollars Entertainment LLC, that way the money you make, you know, they had garden stat, and that way you ain't got to have no job and you can copy. Got you, heard you. But if you somebody, as far as not even somebody, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, you got good months and you got bad months, right? 
you got good months and you got bad months, right? Let's say you go LLC it, you know, I ain't do no comedy shows or whatever the case may be. And now I say, well, I ain't make no money. I ain't make no money in May, right? But they already used to garnish or something. When I tell them that I don't got no money, well, I ain't make no money in May, now what though? You think they're gonna be like, okay, well, when you start making money again, just go ahead and just, go ahead and just give us, you no, know, it don't work like that. So now, I'm forced to, I'm forced to be successful every month now. Because from, from the one month I'm not successful, now I owe them. Now I owe them now because I was successful for two months. I gave them their money, but now I had a bad month. And now I still owe them the same amount of money that I would have owed them if I had a good month. But now I ain't, I ain't have a good month now. What? So it's more it's, it's, it's more to it. You know, like I told y'all, anything that got to do with the government, it's not fair. It's not, it's not equal. It's not meant to be that way. You get what I'm saying? So it's different government assistance and whatever else, but it's not meant to be equal. Like... If you go get a job through the program, they'll tell you, okay, this job paying 12, but they don't tell you that if they send you from the child support building to go apply to that job, that job pay 12, they don't even tell you that they probably got a contract with that job. The job really pay 15, they pocket in the other three dollars per hour and giving you the 12. They don't tell you that part. These are the things that they don't tell you. You think, oh, damn, they gonna help me find a job. That's what's up. Whole time you slaving, doing fifteen dollars a, a hour job, but they paying you twelve. And the other three, the government get. So that's just one person that they got. They make three dollars an hour every hour I work. That's one person, right? It gotta be easily a million some people on child support. They gotta be easily over five hundred thousand. I'm just making up a number. They gotta be easily over five hundred thousand of the people that find a job through the child support thing, right? Add that shit up. It's a scheme no matter how you look at it because that's how it's designed. They look at us like the people that's on child support like we're criminals. Okay, well, the mother of his child. They don't say baby mom. They say parent of boom, boom, boom. You know, the mother of your child. That's how they relate to them. Well, if they came to put them on child support, then he's a bad guy. If, if, if he's on child support, he's a bad guy. So they're not going to treat you fairly like when you go to jail. They look at you like you a bad guy. Oh, he stabbed somebody. He robbed somebody. He's a bad guy. That's the same way they look at you when you're on child support. They look at you like you a bad guy. So they don't give a fuck about what's right. They know what's right and what's wrong. They don't give a fuck. That's not their end game. I'm going to tell you who get treated fairly. The women. The women get treated fairly. They don't deal with the things that we deal with because... They are, you know, the people that's going down there and putting people on there. So before you even go down there for a court hearing or anything about child support, I want you to know that they already look at you like you a deadbeat. They don't care. They don't say, oh, bring in receipts of you taking care of your kid and show us that you in a child's life. They don't give a fuck. You would think that, though, right? If, if, if it was meant to be fair and equal, when, you're, when the mother of your child go down there and say, oh, I want to put them on child support, and they're going to say, okay, why? Oh, because he don't, they don't even ask why. Okay, what's his name? Where he, do you know any information? I know all the information. Okay, cool. And you go down there for the first hearing, they're not asking you, okay, so are you taking care of your child? I've never been asked that. They never asked, um, how much do you spend on your child? How much time do you spend with your child? And they don't come up with a with a, a plan based on what you said. They don't say, okay, well, he spends 200 a month on the child. He spends every weekend with the child. Okay. No, miss, I'm sorry. You don't qualify for child support because he's actually involved. They don't do that. They don't give a fuck. They just want, okay, how much you make? Okay, bet. You get 23% of that. That's it. That's, that's really how it is. They never ask you. Niggas be like, oh, I'm going down there, man. My baby mama some that shit. I'm taking them all the receipts. And, and I just be laughing because I was the same way. Oh, I'm taking them all the receipts. And, bro, they not even going to ask you for that shit. You going to be like, I got receipts. Okay, okay. Do I bring him here? Thank you. Throw him right in the trash. I don't give a fuck about what you're talking about. There ain't no, ain't no, they ain't, ain't no debate in that room. There ain't no word for where. Ain't no your word against hers, nigga. It's hers, and that's all that matter. It don't matter if you ever took care of the child. If you, it doesn't fucking matter. That's what I be trying to tell y'all. So everybody want to judge people and, and and speak on real life situations that they don't know nothing about. You know, and, and like. 
Am I mad about being on child support? Not as much as I used to. You know, I I came to I came to you know uh, agreeing to, you know to my situation because of my situation. It's this moments where I get weak, like because not even about paying the money. Because I feel like wherever I spend a thousand dollars on my daughter or wherever they took a thousand dollars throughout whatever, it's still a thousand dollars being taken out. So the money part don't even bother me. If it was just literally just paying money, the world would be a better place. But it's the it's the it's the court hearing twice a month and keep asking you questions and keep wanting you to come down there and then the things that they threaten you with if you aren't able to pay it and all and all that shit is what makes it parole. Like the shit is like probation. You know what I'm saying? Like when I didn't have no job and I was trying to pay it out of pocket, they was telling me I need pay stubs or I need a job and I didn't have one. They sending me letters, oh well, yada yada yada, if you don't pay this, we're going to go into your bank account and we're going to take this and do that. Okay, fine. It's still the money I owe paid, no problem. Oh, you got a court date three weeks from now. You miss it? Rather you pay your child support or not. If you miss it, I got letters sitting in my house right now. And you know, it get it get it gets sad because like when you actually involved and you actually, you know, a, a father, it, it, it hit different. If I was a deadbeat, it'd it'd hit different. But when you actually a father, it, it, it hit different. So I'm reading letters because I missed the court date that say, um if you miss the next day, it'll be a warrant out for your arrest and you know, you're driving the driving privilege will be provoked and your passport and you won't be able to travel and and they making you a prisoner and you reading this letter as like like you a fucking criminal like what are you talking about this, it'll be a warrant off of my cause I didn't make an uh, appearance but the money still got paid why do I gotta make an appearance why do I gotta I'm confused about why do y'all want me down there if I'm paying it or the child support is getting paid through the way y'all want it. Through a paycheck getting garnished. Why do y'all want to keep seeing me? I'm not going to keep taking off. They want you to take off all these days, but they want you to get a job. What job is going to keep on? Like, okay, Richard, so you got nothing. Yeah, but that's the type of shit that parents, well, you know, the guys got to go through. And this ain't no cry for help or no sympathy thing. I'm just bringing it down to you because I feel like everybody want to be in your business and they want to understand it. So I'm an open book, you know. Wherever I tell you all this or not, it ain't going to hurt me. I still got to go through what I go through. But maybe what I'm saying that uh, help somebody else that's going through would help them understand. But maybe somebody actually going through it already and they know exactly what I'm talking about. But we talking about a nigga who ain't got no criminal record. You know what I'm saying? I don't have run-ins with the cops. Why the fuck is a nigga like me reading paper saying that I can be arrested for something that don't even make sense? Why? Why is that the case? That's the part about the child support I don't like. The money part is not really a it's not a bad it's not a really a big deal because the money was going to get spent wherever they took it or I had to come out of pocket and do it. But it's the why why am I reading letters saying that I can go to jail? They want to take my driving privilege because I didn't because I missed the appearance. Like why is that that serious? But this is the things that female don't think about. Some. Some some girls do it to be smart, and some girls doing it, but they pretending like they don't understand how how deep it is. When I go down there to them Harris, man, it be so many niggas down there, bro. It don't make no sense. But for what? Cause you want to make sure that like life is right. This is not my uh, story. My homie called me a couple. It's like a month ago. He like, yo, bro, I, I just got a letter in the mail saying, uh. My girl trying to put me on child support with my baby mother trying to put me on child support. I said, damn, bro. So, where you working at? He going to say, yada, yada, yada. I said, yeah, so you want to uh, either find another job or create a side hustle because it's about to get real. He said, oh, no, no, no. I'm going to fight it. I got the receipts. You know, I said, I said bro, I ain't want to kill his hope. I couldn't do it because I was the same way. I didn't want to kill it. I said, all right, bro, yes, sir. Take your receipts down there, bro. Don't miss no appearance. You know, say everything they ask you. Get into detail. And see what happens. He like, all right, bet. He called me later after we talked and said, yeah, man, I'm on child support. I said, bro, I already knew. I already knew this. I already knew you was going to be on child support, right? And he was like, 
Yeah, but before I got on there, right? I went to my baby mama and said, yo, if it's about money, just just throw me a number and I and I'll pay it, and that way, you know, the money did a third. Y'all not gonna believe what she told this nigga. You're not gonna believe. You're not gonna believe what she told this nigga, because I couldn't believe it. He said, shoot me a number and I'll pay it every month. Cause I ain't got time to be all in the no. She said, no. I want to go through this, uh, the system because I want to make sure that it's guaranteed that I get that money. Wow. Like, that's, I'm like, that's fucked up. You want to make sure it's guaranteed that you get that money. That's what she told my man. And this is a true story. I put this on my daughter's life. This is a true story. He probably won his life. That's exactly what he told me. I said, what the fuck? And to think that it's called child support, right? Let me just tell y'all, y'all don't even talk about the child at all. The child don't even get brought up. This is a child support case, but we're not talking about with the child. What's best for the child? Nothing. Is it simply, I'm just trying to garnish your ways. You can keep all that bullshit to yourself. But I'm like, damn, that's fucked up. He trying to pay it. I mean a real bitch. I'm just gonna be honest, you know. A real bitch would have said, alright, well, you know, her, her milk is this, her clothes is this. Yada yada yada. Cool. I need I need 150 every two weeks or or just give me 300 or 400 a month for it, right? That's what a real bitch would have said. Any number, I'm not fuck the number, that ain't the point. But here's what a real bitch would have did if it really came down to whether he was a deadbeat or not, right? Alright, well. Yada, 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 I need 400 a month. Whatever it is, right? And to let him pay it. And if he didn't pay it, you took extra precautions or extra steps to get it. That's understandable. He said, shoot him a number, you did? He said, I'm going to pay it every month. He paid it for three months. Everything was flowing. He he decided to stop because you had an argument or disagreement and he didn't want to pay it. And then you went down there and did that? That's respectable. That's honorable to me. I can respect you for that because you gave a nigga a chance, right? But for you just to go down there and just to put him on it just because y'all broke up. This ain't because he ain't going to see his kids. They just broke up. That's the first thing bitches do. They have your baby and you break up and they shoot down there to do it. And you going to tell them, I want to make sure it's guaranteed, but you need to give them a chance. That's how you know they do that shit to be bitter. But it's not the money is the issue. It's everything else that come with it. It is. It slows you down, you know. It stops you from being able to be free. Like when you're an entrepreneur, you don't have no set. I make this much every month is a new month when you're an entrepreneur, you know. Wherever I do two shows, no shows, it's all it's all you know. It's all a hustle for real. So for you to be having to have a job so you can be able to get garnished, or you be able to have a job so you can do this, I feel like that part of it is what's not fair and. No nigga should have to go through it if he ain't that type of dude. Don't get me wrong. There's some niggas who deserve it, but I don't feel like a guy should have to go through that if he ain't doing nothing wrong. Like, why do we got to deal with that? You think you just getting your money, but you putting a burden on this boy now. Like, even in my situation, it's a lot of things that I can't fucking do because, oh, rich one, you know you got to be obligated to have a job, basically. They telling you you got to have a job. You got to have a job. Why, though? I, they don't tell you why. They just want to garnish you. So me doing comedy shows and stuff like that, some of that stuff be just straight out cash. Some of that shit be a check. But why not just let me pay it? I'm I'm capable of paying it. Why not just let me pay it? Why do I got to go through all these extra channels for no reason? I ain't got nothing to do with my child. I understand the money part of it. Babies got to get taken care of. Milk ain't cheap. Clothes ain't cheap. Time, people to babysit them. All right, okay, that's cool. Why I can't just pay that though? Why I gotta deal with going down there to hear them say the same shit? Okay, well, this month you paid. Okay, so you're on track. Okay, you're good to go. So I just stayed down here, took off work for y'all to tell me that I'm either behind or I'm on time or whatever else. They don't tell you nothing relevant. You go down there, you sit for two hours before you get seen. Okay, well, you pay. Okay, so all your child support is paid up. That's good. Okay, so where you working? Cause he pays up. Okay, okay. Perfect. Okay, well, yeah, so just keep on, you know, working and paying. Okay, you're good. They know, they're, they're not telling you shit. 
They're not telling you nothing. Like, they ain't like you gotta go down there and they're telling you, okay, so what's new for child support is, you go down there and hand them to tell you some bullshit. You done took off work, paid for parking, wasted four to six hours of your fucking time for them to tell you some bullshit. Like, okay, you on time. Okay, you a little behind this month. A payment is due for about, you know, $70 because, you know, I guess you didn't work that much your last check, so they couldn't take it out. That's, you could have called me over the phone. They want everybody to go the fuck downtown. Traffic, parking, headache, big ass building. That's just too much dumb shit, but that's what females want to put you through just to make them feel better because it's not no other reason on why. It got to be, I just want to make his life a living hell of that. But that's a two-way street because... You think you put somebody on child support, you making life a living hell, right? Well, there's niggas out there that'll just beat up all your boyfriends and fuck your pop up and and do this and it just make your life a living hell as well. I'm not that type of guy, but it's niggas that's like that. So you want to be petty about some child support. Now he fucking your life up literally. And, and then what? He a bad guy now? Oh, why you Oh, That's weird. He doing what? Well, What's the difference between him fucking your life up physically and you going down there and putting that nigga on child support and making him do all this extra shit every fucking month? It ain't one. But that's what we deal with. So for all the people out there that think that, you know, 10000 is a lot of money, you know, apparently, you know, a lot of people fucked up. I used to be there. So hearing 10000 and a nigga that work at Amazon, it's not common for you or you don't understand it because it's not every day. But I just want you to understand something that, like, when you work hard and you and you want to see yourself win, you will really understand that money is not really that really hard to come across. It's about just going to go get it. It's already there. It ain't like you got to create money. It's there. Just go get it. But people look at it like, no, I ain't got no 10000 because you don't got it. Because a nigga with 10000 here another nigga got 10000 he don't think nothing of it. We get what I'm saying like fences, right? Let's just say this is just, you know, just so you can understand, right? You got 500 in your pocket. And you see a post and somebody say, you ain't got 500, duh, duh, duh. You don't even give a fuck. Because you got 500 in your pocket. What surprised you was the number that the person said. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa 10,000. Now I just got 10,000. That's because you don't got it. Anybody that had it, ain't thinking that for them. Who gives a fuck? They got 10,000. But for people that didn't have it, that seemed like a lot to them. And, then, and you know, it was a point in time where it was to me too. Until you got it. Like, man, this ain't shit. Don't you know 10,000 ain't nothing but 10 months of rent you be like damn that's it 10,000 ain't nothing but 10 months of rent that should be gone so wherever I make more money or not that 10,000 I said that I ain't replying to bro that's just 10 months of rent that ain't no fucking money but it takes for you to get it to understand like yo the more money you get you be like man that shit ain't no fucking money I gotta get some more how can I flip this 10 to 20 and then 20 to 40 40 to 80 80 to motherfucking 160 and now now we working with numbers now. Now I'm getting a couple of hours. But until then, that shit is it's really, it's really it's chump change, man. You know, but I'm going to let y'all go, man. It's Friday. Y'all try to turn up and shake y'all ass. I'm going to let y'all do y'all thing. You know, be careful about this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying?